Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. My name is Humberto and this is my buddy Lenny. Here we are today to bring you our thoughts about the latest Marvel movie, Avengers Infinity War. And just to let you guys know, this is a spoiler review, so before you start getting mad at anyone, just understand we're gonna spoil a lot of stuff on this video. Infinity War is directed by the Russo brothers, who also directed Captain America Civil War and Captain America Winter Soldier, two of the greatest Marvel movies in the Marvel series, in my opinion. Right, and if anyone hasn't seen that, Bethel's going to show you the cover so that you know to go and watch that. Civil War, man. Yep, climb from out under that rock you've been living in and watch the Russo brothers' movies. Civil War. Prerequisite. Okay, so let's start off with a little synopsis of the film. As most of you know, this is Thanos' quest. is a continuation of his journey or his crusade, however you want to look at it, for the Infinity Stones. He's getting really close, and of course, we have to have good versus evil. We've got the good guys, the Avengers, and a whole slew of other superheroes trying to stop him from getting uh, what he wants, and what he ultimately wants is to kill half the universe. I think that that's a nice segue into the obvious tone that this movie sets for itself, which is, mm -hmm. I would say, a very distinct tone compared to the other Marvel movies. So let's get into that. Uh, to this point, a lot of people, you know, they like or they dislike the tone that Marvel has with his movies. A lot of times they say, oh, it's, you know, at points it's a little too humorous, a little too campy, too many quips, you know, it's too lighthearted, it's not dark enough. Well, they keep some of that for this movie, but it is, like you said, a very distinct tone. Uh, From the beginning. Exactly, right. Which it's, is a very much a darker tone, I would say. Right. Um, but what's awesome about this movie, in my opinion, is that it manages to retain the signature humor that was so present in movies like Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor Ragnarok and does an awesome job at making those characters shine when there's humor present. You know? Right, the movie doesn't take itself too seriously. like. It's obvious that there are darker moments, uh, even more morose moments, which is set off by the music, which we'll, we'll visit later. Yeah, it, it's definitely serious, but like you said, you know, it doesn't take itself uh, too seriously. It's got a lot of funny moments. Uh, I, I don't know how many times I counted myself and everyone in the theater laughing out loud. It makes perfect sense because this is, of course, you know, an apocalyptic storyline, yeah. right? So, I mean, the fact that the tone is much more serious and a little at times like intense is is very appropriate starting off for example with the with the scene with uh, Thor and Loki we have a death right off the bat right uh, Loki dies and we know that <laughs> wow okay yeah like I said spoiler review okay Loki dies but anyway so yeah so with Loki dying that really sets the tone it gives Thor even more motivation to uh, come after Thanos right I want to talk a little bit about the rhythm of the film because that's one of my favorite things about this movie. The movie is called Infinity War, so obviously you expect a war, right? Um, but I was worried that they were gonna overdo it with the battle scenes, but I didn't feel that way. I felt mm -hmm. like there was a nice pacing between the intense battle scenes and then the you know, scenes where you have more character interaction and to allow for more character development and for those characters to really progress, you know, and kind of like fulfill their dynamic arcs. Right, and Marvel um, does such a good job of that. Okay, so I'm gonna reach over you, buddy, and I'm gonna grab this uh, Civil War DVD, which I believe is one of the best, if not the best comic book movies ever made. In this movie, they do a really good job of meshing and mashing all these characters together and still retaining a lot of characterization. Uh, a lot of the relationships between characters, they, they bring them to life. It's not just battle after battle after battle. And uh, with this movie, you can imagine how hard it would be to include all these different characters within the cinematic universe. But like you said, they still take time to make it a movie that does capture some parts of your heart, okay? Uh, Definitely. Now, the battle scenes do do move the movie along. It It is, at some points, fast-paced, but you kind of need that with a movie that's well over two hours long. This is very much an amalgamation of all of the Marvel movies, right? So I, I was concerned about how, you know, it was gonna be overcrowded or overloaded, but once again, the film pleasantly surprised me and I felt like they handled, you know, including all of the different stories very well. And I like how the humor just keeps the film together throughout. It really brings the viewers in and there are some really nice jokes throughout the movie. Gosh, I, really I can't tell you it. how many times we were rolling laughing, yeah, all laughing the time. Out loud. That, that exchange, that interplay between Chris Pratt and Chris Hemsworth. That's right. Okay, uh, Star-Lord and Thor. <laughs> where, 
<laughs> you know, obviously he feels a little intimidated by Thor, and then a of course emasculated there. That's right. Yeah. You know, Gamora's stroking his muscles, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, enough of that." You know. Yeah, some and, really good jokes, some yeah. really well written jokes. Like yeah, that. I, I loved it. And you know what? It, when I was watching that part, you know, that whole that whole sequence, it really made me remember. Gosh, this is why so many people love the Guardians, and that's why that franchise is just so good. Uh, it's arguably one of the best franchises in the Marvel universe. Check it out if you haven't already. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep. This is probably my personal favorite Marvel film. Because mm. I love the Marvel <laughs> movies where the humor takes center stage. And I also love the music in this film. I love Thor Ragnarok for the humor as well. I don't so. know. I think Civil War might have something to say about that. You know, I like <laughs> Civil War. I like Civil War. Okay, so... This movie, like I said, it, it has touching moments with the characters. Uh, we do bring those out, but they don't bump you over the head over and over, letting you know, hey, this is what this character is about, okay? But they do go more in depth with some characters that they haven't in other movies. So, for right. example, uh, you were mentioning about Gamora earlier. There are some scenes between uh, Zoe Saldana, right? Yeah. And uh, Josh Brolin that are some of my favorites in the movie because a lot of the there's a lot of good pathos that's being conveyed there, and she does some really good uh, work here and shows a nice range of emotions. And uh, so does Josh Brolin, man. Like, wow, amazing work by Josh Brolin and how he makes Thanos, even though a CGI character predominantly, mm -hmm. seem very believable. Before I forget about Gamora. Oh yeah, uh, I do want Sorry. to mention one thing. Uh, yeah, that I, I really liked. You mentioned she had a range of emotions. Yeah, and you know Zoe Zaldana is an excellent, excellent actress. Okay. Yeah. But her her ability to to really bring out heartbreak really took center stage in this movie, especially that moment where she killed killed Thanos or thought she had, and she was just torn apart and how it was just a conflict for her. And I was like, man, I, I felt that. I That's really right. did. But let's go back to Thanos. So you're mentioning about the CGI, right? And he, you know. Some people can overlook the facial expressions if you're just kind of, you know, focusing on the action. But man, did his facial reactions really bring a human element to it. He really humanized that character. He really and did. You mentioned him being complex. Um, I, he went through a nice range of emotions. I'm so happy to say that we have a memorable villain in this movie. Because it's so important for a Marvel movie, you know. Mm -hmm. you, it's not just about the heroes, it's also about the villains. And I'm glad that we have a, a well-rounded, complex villain mm -hmm. in Thanos. Yeah, I like a villain that believes they're doing the right thing. And that, you know, that conflicts against other people's beliefs or standards. That's right. Such as the good guys, right? And that's so right. That's, has, that's where you have that conflict. He has his strong convictions right. and he thinks he's genuinely right and what he's mm -hmm. doing you know he stands by what he believes in even though you know we as the viewer and the other heroes disagree here's right? my problem with Thanos I mean we've been talking singing his praises right but my problem is yes he has motivation and yes they kind of go into a little bit of a backstory as to why he's motivated to do what he does but it it didn't resonate with me it didn't I didn't really buy it so much because I needed I needed more of a backstory or more of a reason uh, to get the audience to believe that someone would be this motivated to want to kill off half the universe. What would drive someone to either be mad in general or mad enough to get to the point to want to kill off half the universe? Now, okay. for okay. anyone who's a comic book fan, you know that in the comic books, Thanos is doing all of this to please Mistress Death. Okay, He's obsessed with her. Uh, in a way, this is like a courtship. He's doing this for her to win her heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, Mistress Death wasn't mentioned at all in this movie, okay? And I'm okay with that as long as they would have given him a more fleshed out background and backstory. And that's my major problem with Thanos. Um, it kept sticking with me in the back of my mind throughout the movie. It bothered me, but ultimately I liked the actor's portrayal. Just I felt the character could have been a little more well-rounded. Well, well, well that's, that's interesting. I, 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 I see what you're saying. I, 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 I didn't really mind, you know? I thought that I was I was pleased with the information that I, you know, was given in the film. I didn't really need any more background information about him. I I really appreciated the few little flashbacks that they had to you know, let the viewer know his relationship between him and um, Gamora. Right, he's, strike, he's um, trying to strike that balance in the universe. Yeah, and, and to me, he, he's comparable, you know, to like Dr. Manhattan in The Watchmen. As I watched Thanos in this movie, I kept thinking over and over again of Dr. Manhattan That's a fabulous in, point. In, in Watchmen because they have some similarities where they're all about survival of the fittest and they have a very pessimistic view on life and, you know, um, it's all about them and they have a very selfish outlook, 
you know and so that's getting to one of the deeper themes of the movie which is like this idea of sacrifice and love versus you know selfishness so I, I, I like that about Thanos in this movie. So the music in this movie was a little different than what I was used to. Uh, in a lot of movies you see uh, they have all these different songs and soundtracks and I guess I'm still thinking about Guardians of the Galaxy and, and those wonderful soundtracks they have. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one when I was watching the end, the end of the movie I saw that they had one movie credit for the rubber band man and then the Black Panther theme and then nothing else and I thought about that and I was like yeah that's right. There was a lot of uh, score. There were, yeah, there's a lot of score in there. There's a lot of orchestral music, and uh, there are a couple times where I thought, eh, a little too dramatic, you know, not very Marvel-like. But again, that's trying. That's them trying to go into this whole dark, morose, um, kind of intimidating, serious tone. I did feel that it was borderline over the top and manipulative at times with the music. Um, but I was also glad that they didn't do the same thing that they did with Guardians because I didn't want this movie to feel like Guardians, you know? So I was glad that they only hit you with that one song. With cool. Gamora singing it and Drax is knocked out. You yeah. Know, and of course, Groot, yeah. you know, teen group, rebellious teen group playing his video rebellious games. Rebellious teen you know? Groot, yeah. Standard. That gets me to another point that I want to talk about quickly, which is that every single Marvel character has an opportunity in this movie to really shine and to really showcase their their unique talents, I guess you, I, yeah. I would say. And so Groot, you know, surprises you. There's some really nice surprises, particularly Chris Hemsworth as, as Thor. There's a couple of Deus Ex Machina moments oh, yeah. where he just kind of like, you know, intervenes with his, you know, powers of of lightning um, and his hammer and uh, he saves the day and That's those right. are some of the most like a uh, crowd pleasing moments in the movie. I got chills when I saw that. Yeah. You know people in the theater started clapping you know it was I clapped. awesome. Yeah. I clapped. Yeah. yeah. I did. Yeah. A moment where the entire crowd just went whoa was when Captain America was revealed in the shadows behind uh, the train in the subway. Oh yeah 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 right. he slowly like emerges. Yeah I yeah, love yeah, that. Yeah. Really um, cool. So another part of the movie that I really liked was seeing how everyone died okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of scenes where some characters make some really selfless sacrifices, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's one in particular that's very memorable for me with Doctor Strange and Iron Man. Oh, yeah. um, that really touching, really pulls at your heartstrings, you know. So this movie definitely had some uh, emotional uh, yeah. moments to it. It was a combination of a lot of different things. You know, the movie slow down okay they knew what they were doing with their cinematography to just slow the pace the music changed dramatically uh, you saw all these characters just slowly disintegrating it was it was slow so it really you're like no no don't go don't go and what killed me was when peter parker died oh i was man, like wow yeah. they went there they went there with peter parker and i was like yeah. that's my favorite character of all time yeah. and the way that he goes oh he doesn't yeah want to. he doesn't want to die i don't want to go sir sir i don't want to go and you're like no yeah. I heard the lady, yeah. she was two seats uh, to my right, sniffling. She yeah. was sniffling, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm yeah. going to hold it together. <laughs> this movie was so awesome when it comes to its special effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the space battle scenes uh, were so memorable and so well crafted and almost symmetrical. Like, perfectly, perfectly shot. Um, so I really did enjoy the special effects. Didn't look cheesy, never looked uh, fake, you know. They didn't overdo um, it. Yeah, they didn't overdo all. it either. They weren't distracting at all. They were really good. I was paying attention a lot to that one. I don't know her name, but she was the one henchwoman with like the horns here, and she was taller and had the staff. She was the one that was fighting with uh, Scarlett Johansson. The Scarlett Johansson, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am a huge Marvel fanboy. I mean, I'll admit that, okay, so. Probably more than I am. Yeah, yeah, probably I mean, more I mean, than you guys, I am. You guys can see I, all my Marvel stuff back yeah, here. Yeah, I love I mean, Marvel movies, but I love like you know I'm a fan of movies in general. But I think this is your genre, yeah, man. This, this, this is, is your. This, this is my cup of tea for sure. Yeah, and it's hard for me to look at this movie without my Marvel fanboy lenses on. So I kind of have to take those off and look at it objectively. Uh, the, the Marvel fanboy in me wants to give it like an A plus. Oh, beautiful! Let's start throwing roses and yes, it's the greatest movie of all time, right? But uh, when, when I when I take a close look at it, my issues with Thanos' backstory um, kind of threw me off a little bit. Uh, granted, the previous Marvel movies have already ha had already established characterization, but just in general, I like a good plot, and I kind of felt like they could have gone deeper into the significance of Thanos' quest and life, you know, the re uh, more of the repercussions of what's going to happen. They could have really built it up a little better, 
other than just maybe going from action scene to action scene, here's some funny moments, here's a humanizing moment. Uh, I, I just wanted the plot to be a little more well-rounded, and I'm hoping that comes out in Avengers 4. Again, I'm trying to be picky. I'm trying. I loved this movie. I'll be honest. Okay? Yeah, I did so, too. I really did. I see what you're yeah, saying, though. Yeah, I so, mean, really, like, I, I, I agree. You know, I think that there, there are some little issues with the plot. A little, you know, some of the scenes felt a little bit rushed, maybe. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish they would have slowed it down, but I get it. They were trying to, like, include all these different things and get you set it's up hard. for the next story. Obviously. It's hard, you know. There's there's a little issues here and there with the pacing. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. I had a great time watching it. For me, personally, this is an A-. minus. Okay. I have to give it the same grade. And trust me, guys, we didn't say, hey, let's both give it an A-. minus. This is the first time <laughs> This is the first time I heard his grade, and that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like... A minus, A minus, you know. Um, you stealing my grade, man? Uh, sorry, it's the same grade I gave Black Panther, you know, <laughs> when we talked about that. Um, you know, just, I mean, it, it is an awesome spectacle. It really it is. is. It uh, is. It, it's, it's not easy, right? Trying to put all of these elements, like you said, into a movie, but Marvel does the best that it can, and it's highly entertaining. Everyone should rush to the theater to watch Go this. Go watch it, man. Go yes. watch it. So that's our spoiler review of Avengers Infinity War, and I cannot wait till the next one. In fact, they have, you know, obviously stay till the till after the credits because they always have something for you. Sneak peek. Yep. So here at we go. Okay. Uh, spoiler. Okay. Captain Marvel. Sorry, I don't have any comic books or pictures of Captain Which Marvel. Which I think Brie Larson kind of uh, either either is still filming or ha is about to wrap uh, filming uh -huh. at this point. I think. Yeah. So really excited to see her play that role. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think you know, strategically Marvel's doing doing a smart thing too. I mean, you're getting a female protagonist with her own movie. Uh, I think this is going to do very well in the box office, and I can't wait to see it. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning in. We appreciate it, and uh, thank you for watching. All right, till the next time.